Hello everyone and thank you for joining us. We will start shortly. Um, let's wait for a few seconds to let people join in. Dorit, Elam and Nico, are you with me? Yes, Hello. I'm here. Nico? Yes, I'm here. Hello. Okay, amazing. So great. So let's start. So welcome to Stakeholder Meet, the bi-weekly Twitter space show brought to you uh, by Stakeholder Foods. Uh, my name is Orit Goldman, the VP Biology, and I will be hosting um, Stakeholder Meet today. In this episode, I am super excited to have Dorit Elav, Elam Golan, and Nicolas Moreno, my colleagues and researchers at Stakeholder Foods. So after our previous episodes, where we talk about the cell, the source, the isolation, the growth, um, the characterization of the cells, the process uh, from an isolated cells to a cell line, today we will go from the tissue culture to our table and we will talk about the texture and flavor. So if you are curious about the scientific side of this exciting topic, stay tuned with us. Um, and uh, if you are joining us live, just drop your questions as comments on our uh, Q&A tweet. So we will leave uh, some time for the Q&A uh, at the end of the show or in between questions and uh, to address uh, all your uh, questions or your comments. So Dorit, Elam and Nico, welcome. Um, I'm excited to have you here today. So maybe you can introduce yourself uh, so people uh, will know you and uh, will know a little bit uh, about you, your background. So maybe Dorit, you can start. Okay, no problem. Can you hear me all right? Yes. Great. So I'm Dorit. Um, I'm at Stakeholder Foods for about three and a half years now. Uh, I have a master's degree in um, basically a science of medicine, basi um, sort of, but I have mastered um, cell isolation and cell culture and um, cell encapsulation in um, scaffolds, in um, tissue-derived tissue, tissue derived scaffolds. And now at Stakeholder Foods, I'm basically mainly working on the fat uh, tissue and on the fat cells. Amazing. Elam? Hello, Ori. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. So good evening, everybody. It's a great day uh, to be here today. Thank you for inviting me. My name is Eilam, and I'm a mechanical engineer and biotechnology. I graduated uh, from Tel Aviv University with a bachelor and master degree in mechanical engineering and biotechnology. Um, under the guidance of Dr. Elat Lesman, I conducted an academic research for my master's uh, thesis, which focused on biomechanics and tissue engineering. After completing my studies, uh, I was uh, very fortunate uh, to continue to, um, to work with my passion for engineering, physics, and biology by joining uh, Stakeholder Food as a tissue engineer. Great. Thanks. Nico? Hello. Uh, I'm Nicolas Moreno. I'm a food engineer among Stakeholder Food. I'm a food technology engineer. Uh, seven years experience uh, on the develop development project, uh, products. Um, so. Okay, so thank you. Uh, so now we know you a little bit more. So today we will discuss about cell differentiation uh, from uh, the uh, uh, tissue culture uh, to table, and uh, maybe uh, we can a little bit introduce what is uh, cell differentiation. So cell differentiation refers to the process by which a less specialized cells 
undergoes a series of changes uh, in gene expression, protein synthesis, and cellular structure, and ultimately resulting in the formation of a specialized cell type uh, with a specific function, like muscle cells, fat cells, that we will talk about uh, during this Twitter space. So now I hope you understood what is cell differentiation. Let's start with our first question. Why um, it is so important to differentiate the cells? So Dorit, would you like to enlighten us uh, with fat differentiation? Sure. So um, for starters, uh, the cells we use are in a non-defined state. So they are multipotent, meaning they don't have, they don't play one role in the tissue. They can have some multiple like lineages that they can follow. Um, cells in the meat we eat, on the other hand, are very specific in their characteristics in the tissue they inhabit. Uh, if it's meat, if it's um, fat, tissue, uh, etc. In order to define each cell and assign a role to it, we need to lead the cells down a path called differentiation, like you said. Um, this process is crucial for the texture and taste of the product. Uh, fat cells that went through differentiation have a distinctive taste and mouthfeel, and they contribute a lot to the juiciness of the meat. Uh, they also contribute to the smell while cooking the product. Okay, thanks Dorit for helping us uh, grab the value of fat differentiation, the benefits it provides to the meat. Um, maybe Elam, you can uh, give us additional information about muscle differentiation? Yeah, sure. As uh, Dorit mentioned, one of the key reasons why cell differentiation is crucial is to satisfy the desired sensory attributes of meat such as taste, aroma, texture, and uh, even visibility when we're developing whole cuts of meat. So let's start with uh, taste, aroma, and visibility. Muscle cells contain protein like myoglobin, for example, which are, uh, contribute to the flavor and aroma of meat. Myoglobin also gives meat its red color and contributes to the taste and freshness of the meat. And uh, actually, this was just one example among many. Uh, let's move on to texture. Muscle cells also play a critical role. Their unique fiber structure gives meat its chewiness and mouthfeel. We used uh, proper differentiation of uh, cells into muscle cells with the alignment and arrangement that exists in meats that we know is essential to mimic the desired texture of conventional meat. Uh, if we want to achieve the right texture, and uh, so we must uh, um, mimic this thing and this process of differentiation. Great. So that uh, now that we uh, uh, know that meat sensory qualities are influenced by its fat and muscle, um, how exactly can we make sure that the cultivated proteins we use maintain the nutritional value of the uh, original tissue, the, the meat that we are buying in uh, the soup, supermarket. Uh, Elam, uh, mm -hmm. do you want yeah, to take yes, the lead? Yes, yes sure. Uh, first and foremost, muscle cells are the primary source of uh, quality protein in meat. Muscle cells contain protein that are rich in essential amino acids, which are the building blocks of protein, and uh, they are essential for our body growth and the uh, uh, action of repair and maintenance of our body. Uh, and about fat, uh, Dorit, maybe do you want to explain about uh, the fat? Yeah, of course. Um, so, like I said earlier, in addition to the flavor and juiciness that are directly sourced from the fat, we can also enjoy a high quality nutritional value, such as omega-3 and omega-6 fats that can be found in meat. Um, in addition, our body requires fat from nutrition to build healthy tissues, especially in the brain, which consists of up to 60% fat. Um, another positive, um, not another, but a big positive point for cultured fat is that, is that we have the possibility to control the fat composition to some extent. 
allowing us to add the desirable fatty supplements and maybe subtract the undesirable fats from the final product, such as trans fats that we can find nowadays in meat. And uh, cultivated protein are a promising alternative to the traditional animal products, but it's important to ensure that they maintain the nutritional value of the original tissue. Here are some ways to obtain. <clears throat> we can optimize the ground condition. The nutritional composition of the final product is heavily influ influenced by the ground condition of the cells and by optimizing the nutrition, the nutrients <clears throat> and environmental condition for the cells, we can ensure that the final product is nutritionally similar to the traditional meat. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Dorit, Elam, and Nico, uh, to, um, by explaining us uh, uh, how uh, the nutritional value are important and how we can reach those nutritional value uh, um, to be comparable to the uh, meat that we are buying now at the super. So maybe we can uh, dip a little bit more in the uh, science part now. So Dorit Elam, can you please explain us the process of fat and muscle differentiation? Maybe we can start with the uh, fat differentiation process, Dorit? Okay. Um, nowadays, there are two general categories of cell differentiation processes into fat cells. One of them includes chemical compounds like anti-inflammatory drugs and hormones that activate biological pathways in the cell to induce lipid droplet formation from different substrates that the cells take up from the growth medium, such as sugars and fatty acids. These chemical compounds are usually added to the growth medium and are not safe to eat. This protocol is mostly applied in academic research as proof of concept of a differentiation. Um, the second category includes enriching the growth medium with substrates that induce formation of lipid droplets inside the cells. These substrates are often selected to be food grade, um, so that means they're safe to eat, making this category much more attractive to the cultured meat industry, and is also the process we apply at stakeholder foods. Once the cells produce lipid droplets within their cytoplasm, they start to, to grow in volume and swell up to contain as much fat as they can. The cells also produce triglycerides, just like the cells in the natural body of the animal. This process induces a self-positive feedback to produce more FFAs and more triglycerides. Great. Uh, so this was about fat. What about muscle differentiation? Elam? Yeah. Uh, one approach for muscle differentiation is through mimicry of the biochemical process that occur during muscle differentiation in vivo. means in the body of the animal, like in the body of the animal. This involves using a unique growth media and culture conditions that provide the necessary nutrients and growth factors which require to guide the cells toward muscular differentiation. <clears throat> In addition to this conventional method, there are other physical stimulation methods that, uh, such as uh, mechanical and electrical stimulation, which can be used to mimic physical microenvironment of the muscle cells in order to promote them, their differentiation and maturation. I want to emphasize something important. I want to emphasize that achieving good muscle differentiation is a critical step. However, it is not enough to only achieve differentiation because the maturation process of the muscle tissue is equivalent, uh, it's also important. Actually, it's equivalent important to it, to the other one. The maturation plays a critical role in creating the natural texture of muscle tissue. This is achieved by creating thick, aligned, and elongated muscle fibers that give the tissue its texture. Uh, and the furthermore, the maturation process of muscle tissue also leads to increased production of the, pro of the protein inside that we're interested in because we also want the product will 
uh, will characterized by a good nutritional value. Great. So let me check if we have. A... So now uh, we uh, understood well uh, um, that uh, to differentiate the cells, we need some goody. Um, so, um, however, uh, as uh, Elam said, you must also train muscle cells. And the question here, Elam, is for you. Um, can you please explain a little bit more about the mechanical and electrical stimulation? Yes, yes, sure. Uh, mechanical stimulation, for example, involve stretching of the tissue to uh, uh, stretching the tissue, for example. It's subjecting the tissue to physical force. If I were uh, close my eyes for a moment and imagine myself as a cow that walking peacefully in a meadow, my muscles will, would uh, cyclically stretch and relax during the movement. This biomechanical process actually causes various signals that promote the differentiation and maturation in the body of the animal. If we consider the embryonic development, it's another example, we can observe that the growth of the skeleton is faster in comparison to soft tissues, leading actually to a consistent stretching of the muscle tissue. And this also, this stretching play an important role in promoting the differentiation and maturation process of the muscle, uh, as well as uh, shaping the overall structure of the uh, muscle during the embryonic development. Um, let's uh, move on to electrical stimulation, which is actually expose, expose uh, the tissue to electrical pulses. And this actually um, causes muscle to contract cyclically electrical pulses. This method is based on the physiology of muscle activity, which is controlled through the nerve system of our body by electrical pulses. As many of us, of us know, if we want to increase muscle mass, we need to go to the gym. So electrical stimulation is the same way. It promotes differentiation, maturation, and growth of the muscle. So just like going to the gym, using electrical stimulation can help us to produce cultured meat with larger, more mature muscle fibers and more natural texture. Okay, but uh, how do you know uh, whether you've succeeded in producing meat, uh, muscle or fat cells that are on par with native ones? What are the quality expectations? Dori, Telam, Nico? Um, sure, I can answer that first. Okay. Um, so the first step towards defining a desirable result is to induce the differentiation in tissue culture conditions and um, staining of the cultures with reagents that are specific to the differentiation process we induce. In adipo differentiation, which is our name or the biological name for um, differentiating stem cells into adipocytes, um, we want to stain the fat inside the cells. In this process, we compare different protocols according to the intensity of the staining. If we use uh, fluorescent dyes or if we use um, chemical dyes. In addition, we test the protocol's success by seeking specific markers that are present in the natural process of cell differentiation, such as uh, cytokines that are secreted during the differentiation or cell markers that appear during differentiation and so on. Because the fat contributes to the flavor and texture of the tissue or the product, we would also like to reach a specific result in those parameters. So it is very important to perform taste and smell tests after the differentiation process is done, or even in intermediate time points during the process, so we can compare the taste of the native fat tissue to the cultured one. In parallel, we perform lipid, lipid profiling of our differentiated samples, and from that, we learn what the cells do to the substrates we provide and how each composition affects the flavor, smell, and texture of the product. Okay. Elam, do you want to add something? 
Uh, yes, I describe a bit uh, about uh, about this topic uh, which more uh, relevant to muscle differentiation. Uh, actually, the process of muscle differentiation it uh, might sound complicated, but it's quite simple to understand. Um, when muscle cells are in their early stages of development, they are small, round, and uh, individual precursor cells. During the differentiation process, this cell elongated and fused together to form one long aligned multinucleated muscle fiber. So we can observe this process using a microscope and evaluate it qualitative, qualitatively and quantitatively. The better than the, the, the differentiation process, the more muscle fiber we can see there, which will be denser and more aligned, longer and thicker. Moreover, the analysis of cells under a microscope can significantly enhance by using antibodies and various dyes that enable us to label different, uh, uh, different components of the cells, such as nuclei, for example, or uh, various skeletal and uh, muscle-specific protein. This labeling allow, allows us to visualize and distinguish different structures and proteins within the cells, providing us a more comprehensive understanding of the cell's characteristic during the differentiation. Okay, thanks. So um, this was uh, about the cells, uh, differentiation of the cells into fat or muscle cells. But when it comes to our plate, how can you be sure that you have a product that reached the perfect uh, smell, take, taste, um, and texture, of course? The ultimate goal of, develop, of developing cultured meat is achieving product that has the desired sensory attributes. So uh, tasting panels, for example, are commonly used to assess those. In addition to their evaluation, using uh, we can use advanced measuring equi equipment, like, for example, electronic nose, electronic, electronic tongue, and the texture analysis instrument. Okay. Can you tell us a little bit more about the texture? Yeah, sure. The texture analysis is... Uh, way to measure how food products feel in our mouth. We can simulate action like biting, tearing, or cutting, and measure the properties that define the tested product's behavior. And uh, the, goal of this, uh, uh, the goal of this is to uh, make the product have the same texture as natural meat, so that when people eat it, it will feel the same. Thanks, Elam. Nico, maybe uh, you can uh, help us uh, to, understand, to understand more about uh, the uh, texture, the smell, and the taste. For sure. Uh, regarding the development of the texture of the final product, the goal is clear. <clears throat> the goal is to obtain the exact texture that one will feel if they were eating fish, for example, or a ribeye steak. We can also monitor the nutrient composition as the cell grown and differentiated into muscle and fat tissue. It's important to regularly analyze the nutrient composition of the tissue. Um, this will allow us to ensure that the level of the key nutrients such as protein, fat, and micronutrients are similar to those found in traditional meat. We can also consider adding uh, nutrients. If it's necessary, we can add uh, specific nutrients to the ground media to ensure that the final product have a similar nutritional profile to the traditional food, uh, meat. And finally, we are conducing taste and sensory tests. In addition to the monitoring the nutrition composition of the final product, it's important to conduct taste and sensory taste uh, to ensure that the, that the cultivate protein have similar sensory quality to the traditional meat. This will help to ensure 
that the product is accepted by the consumer and we can use uh, as a valuable alternative to the traditional meat. Great. So now uh, we have uh, the cells that can uh, differentiate into fat and muscle cells. So we have the cells, but how uh, we can uh, make a product, uh, a final product? Elam, Dorit, Nico? I will go first. Okay. So the answer to this, actually, there is a, a lot of ways to generate products with differentiated fat and muscle cells. One way, for example, is to incorporate the cells into plant-based products. By doing so, we can create products that are much more similar to natural meat compared to other meat analogs that exist today. And we're talking about uh, sensory aspect, uh, texture, taste, aroma, and even the appearance of the product. Additionally, uh, with the help of cell culture and also 3D printing technologies in our case, uh, we can create products such as Carpaccio, where a thin mosaic of muscle and fat cells are connected together in the right arrangement, and even whole cut, whole cut of meat by imitating the arrangement of muscle cells and fat cells in cuts like uh, cilion, fillet, and ricotte. And actually, this is, can be uh, quite similar to the Carpaccio, but we built a 3D piece that it's much thicker. Um, and I believe that in the near future, this product will be identical to the meat we currently buy at the butcher shop. Um, um, okay. Um, Dorit, what about the fat? What we can do with the fat? So when it comes to fat, there are several ways to generate a product from the cells after they differentiate. One of them is to use the cells as fatty biomass in processed products, such as vegan patties that are supplemented with cultured fat or for added flavor, um, plant-based sausages and burgers, for example. Um, another way is to encapsulate the cells in a three-dimensional scaffold material and combine muscle differentiated, se differentiated cells to produce a whole cut product. Um, a third option is to use fat as an independent product like tail fat after the cells are, are cultured to form a standalone tissue in a specific process. This product can be used for barbecue and anything that requires fat. Soups. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Barbecue is better than soup. Sorry, yeah, Dorita. Probably. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, Nico, if tomorrow okay. I'm giving you um, fat cells and muscle cells, what are you able uh, to do with Great. that? Once you have the cells and the product, uh, <clears throat> sorry, once you have uh, the cells and the production process optimized, we can begin to formulate the product. This may involve combining the cells with another ingredient, such a plant-based products, to give final product mouthfeel and flavor to identical to original products. But at the end, we won't need to mix our cells with different or another ingredients. We will have a 100 cultivate protein product. Okay, so maybe we will have a hundred percent cultivate protein product that it's printed, uh, hopefully. So thank you uh, very much, uh, Dorit, Elam, and Nico. Uh, thank you so much uh, for all your explanation. I really hope now you have a clear understanding of this subject and how we can create differentiated cells to make culture protein from immortalized cell line developing in big quantities. So uh, let me check. No. Since uh, there are no other questions from the audience, uh, we will wrap it up. So I sincerely hope you appreciated uh, the scientific series on cultivated protein as I did. 
So uh, keep an eye on our social media, please, uh, for updates and uh, upcoming events. So thank you all for listening. Uh, thank you again, Dorit, Elam, and Nico. And see you soon. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Good night.